science. Our five scientists have only a few short days left on their Mediterranean island to solve yet another set of brain-numbing challenges. happen when they face the most basic challenge of all, to put food on the table. So we've got to find it and catch it. <laughs> I'm sure we'll catch something. Any brainy ideas? Oh yeah, I think it's definitely a trip to the seas in order. And of course our hunter-gatherers will need to clean their teeth as well. Uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, can we come up with something like that? Seaweeds again. So. Yes. Seaweeds? Oh, God. Yeah. That'd be great. Oh, I'm sure I can find something to flavour it with, too. Oh, you can flavour it. take so away it the be, seaweed. Yeah. It won't be quite so revolting. And after enjoying their castaway cuisine, no way will they be allowed to escape doing the dishes. Soap would also be a good thing, I think, don't you? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Seaweed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no seaweed way soap. Soap. <laughs> <laughs> no, seaweed soap. I think I could make some soap. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, I've been I should hope so, being you're a chemist. No promises. So, it sounds simple enough, but little does Mike suspect what he's letting himself in for. Um, and finally, uh, <coughs> I know we've all been missing music while we've been here, so um, I thought we might ask our, our building maestro, Dr Hare. See if CD can... player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> CD player would be great. Oh, oh, yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't got any CDs. I have got a record. Uh -huh. So can you do something with that? You could make a record player, couldn't you, Jonathan? Oh, yeah. have You'd have a go. Have a go. Hang on, though. What record is it? <laughs> <laughs> I might not want to hear it. That's the way So, soap to do the dishes, toothpaste, and music to accompany what we hope will be a banquet on our final day. And just three days to pull it all together. The first job for Vanessa, our intrepid marine biologist, is to harvest some nutritious seaweed. She could survive on it if she had to, but it's also in her recipe for toothpaste. But searching for food along the shore of a Mediterranean island has certain limitations. Because the tide doesn't move up and down, you can't explore a large area. Whereas in Britain, you can have a tidal range of sort of eight or nine metres. In the Mediterranean, everything is just at the water. So you either have to sort of get in and uh, swim around looking for stuff, or you have to sort of risk life and limb clambering around on the rocks. But the brisk sea breeze is good news for the wind-powered generator that Jonathan built last time. And our chemist, Mike Bullivant, has a cunning plan to use the electricity to help him make well, soap. Great idea. If I take some salt water yep. and make an electrolytic cell, right. uh, I can produce hydrogen, chlorine and caustic soda. The caustic soda will be a key ingredient, and zapping seawater with electricity to make it is a trick that industry has been using for more than a hundred years. Yeah, it's all wired up. It's all wired up and it's ready to go, yeah. You cost you, though. You're such a capitalist. <laughs> Three yellow for now. But our caustic chemical will need to react with some fat or plant oil to produce those soap molecules. And our plant expert, Anna's already on the case, trying to get some olive oil using a special warm water technique. Right, so I've got a pulp of olives in here. I'm now going to put it in here. Um, this great big jar. And I'm going to put the water in with the olive mixture. And mix it round a bit. Knead it as I do it. And the idea is that the warm water will separate the oil from the other things that are... And, you know, been bashed out of the olives, um, and they sh the olive oil should float to the surface, enabling me to skim it off. And Jonathan's in thinking mode, brainstorming ideas for our record player. I think that you have to be quite naive, really. You mustn't worry about whether the idea is right or wrong. You just put as many ideas as you can down. And it really does help to draw them, because when you actually see them on paper, you can see problems that you might not if you're just thinking in your head. Yeah, that would work. Here it is. So how's the soap making coming along and what about this electrolysis? I've come to see our chemistry wizard. See what I've got is two graphite electrodes. These are from pencils. Yeah. 
Each one will be connected to Jonathan's windmill mm -hmm. generator, generating electricity. Now, when we've powered this up, what we'll get at uh, this electrode will get sodium hydroxide forming. If it works, that's the caustic chemical we'll need for our soap. So sodium chloride in seawater turns into sodium hydroxide. Yeah. When electricity goes when through electricity it. electricity passes through the whole system. Well, I'll, I'll be amazed to see that turned into, uh, into soap, but... All we need now is some wind. <laughs> Vanessa's back from the coast with the first of her toothpaste ingredients. Well, I've got some uh, gigatina in here, which is a red seaweed that I found. Um, a lot of the red seaweeds in Britain, I know, give alginates when you boil them. I'm not sure whether this one is one that I'm not accustomed to, but I'm going to give it a go. Hopefully it'll make a nice jelly for the toothpaste. Used in loads and loads of things like beer and yoghurt and shampoos and stuff. It's edible. I might even feed it to them for the feast. I can't say I really fancy seaweed for dinner. But Mike Leahy's promised to get us a fish with an improvised rod and reel. This is good. It's changed from being stuck in the lab. It's a lot sunnier. You can see I've made it quite a big diameter and it's got to pull in a fair bit of line on every turn or it's really going to be an absolute failure. And then the final bit, the guide, the line will go through this loop to make sure that it actually goes on the reel and doesn't go off the side of it. That's not as bad as I thought. It's mid-afternoon and Anna's done her bit for the soap and got us a supply of olive oil. But our chemist's in trouble. The wind's dropped, the windmill generator's barely turning and there's no sign of caustic soda. It's so gloopy, it's just all jelly. It's brilliant. Our toothpaste ingredients. Finely ground seashells to make a calcium-based abrasive powder and Anna's mint oil flavour enhancer. I'm going to take these big bits out because I think they might be uh, a little bit too abrasive. Abrasive is one thing and pulling your gums off is another. Answer and for that. a kinder, gentler abrasive, finely ground vegetable charcoal. So it needs to be mostly right. the sort of abrasive yep. ingredient, then a little bit of flavouring, yep. oil, and yep. just enough of the um, seaweed alginate to bind yep. it together basically, doesn't it? Here. I don't really know how much I need. Let's put a little bit oh, in at first. It looks, looks great, isn't it? Doesn't it? Dead useful stuff. Yeah. Like. Wonderful. Perfect toothpaste, I reckon. Yes. All I need now is a little bit of flavouring in there. Mm -hmm. Can I use a little bit of yeah, your of peppermint oil? It smells it. Oh, it smells lovely. Yeah. Nice colour. Well, it's floating on the top. I'll just uh, ah, stir it in a bit. Oh, that gives it a great colour. Yeah, I'll turn it off. What we should be seeing is little bubbles, isn't it? Little bubbles of gas forming on the electrodes, I imagine. Right. But nothing's happening, and Mike's beginning to doubt Jonathan's power supply. Well, let's see if the windmill's going. Yeah, it is, it is going round, Mike, but it's a bit erratic and sort of blustery, so... I think if we leave it on all night or something, we'll see yes. what's... Yeah, sure, we're going to have to, aren't we? Yeah. Mike's sure. only hope. Leave it online and pray for a windy night. And I'm about to become a guinea pig for the homemade toothpaste and Anna's disposable toothbrushes. Mark one, we do have another variety here. This is a piece of myrtle bush. What's it? And this one's pine needles, is it? Uh huh. Is everyone going to try this? I'm not going to be the only one. No, I think you should be the first. Right. Here we are. This is our toothpaste ad. I've got a spare setback. It's not bad, is it? Very good. You got the you got the right stuff. You look at <laughs> you look like you've been eating licorice. <laughs> I've been eating charcoal. Oh, you poor chap. But Wait. it doesn't taste too bad, does it? It tastes very pleasant. Oh, it doesn't taste like nothing. What do I do with this? I don't know. Which, well, oh, um, look at you. You look evil. Look at you. Um, now, hang on. Hang on. As the sun sets on our first day, one final job for Mike. Putting his Fred Flintstone rod to the test. And no hint of the storm that's heading our way. Oh, beautiful Whoops. windmill. 
<laughs> Someone thinks our windmill and left it with a pile of rubbish. Oh, oh. no, look at my coil. Mike asked for wind, and he got wind. An overnight gale has put Jonathan's windmill well and truly out of action. We'll leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, you just simply contemplate. It's okay. While Jonathan mourns, Mike's picked himself up and come up with another way to get that vital caustic solution. Well, haven't you were supposed to be making soap, not mucking around with coal? This will be soap after a few steps. Is it good? <laughs> He's decided to try an ancient soap-making technique. This stuff is ash from the fires that we've been having. It's been steeped in water for a few hours, and we filter off the, the solid bits. And yeah. as you can see, what we get is this mucky. I think there's still a lot of small ash particles in there, so we've got to filter it off the solids through a much more efficient process. This is sand in here. It comes mm. out clearer. So yeah. we've got potassium carbonate, that's what we want. Right. And then, that's too dilute a solution of potassium carbonate mm -hmm. in water. So we take it over here, put it on the fire, and just reduce it down. So we're making it more and more concentrated. But the magical thing, Kate, is the potassium carbonate has been reacting with the water to form potassium hydroxide now. So potassium hydroxide is the chemical that we want to start. It's one of the starting materials for our soap. Aha, uh -huh. so there is method in your madness. Yeah, not so crazy after all. With our hoped-for banquet just a day away, and having had no luck with his rod, Mike Leahy's adding to his arsenal. An amateur archer, he's planning a bow and arrow to harpoon a fish. <sighs> Still working on the entertainment system, Jonathan's come up with an ingenious source of power. Gravity. If we wind lots of turns and have a weight, then as this weight falls, it's going to undo the wire and move this pulley round. So we're using weight. But there's one little problem. Now, the trouble is when things fall in, under gravity, they accelerate. In other words, they pick up speed all the time. So, and we don't want that because we want the, the, the turntable and everything to be at constant speed. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to arrange something around here with a bit of friction so that we're, we're balancing the force of gravity with the friction on here. And when that's balanced, the, the weight should fall with constant speed, which will turn the pulley with constant speed, which will then turn the turntable with constant speed. So just drop it in the bottom, yeah? Yeah. Not to be outdone by Mike Leahy, Vanessa and I have knocked up a homemade lobster pot from an old cage and some twigs. Fantastic. And just lower it in now. Oh. Ready? Chances are, do you think we're going to get one? <laughs> I'd really like to say yes, but we we can't really leave it any more than 24 hours because no. it looks pretty swelly and rough down here. I mean, we come back tomorrow, see if there is anything, and um, well, see how it goes. And that helps the process along. So what I'll do right. is tip in. Awfully slow progress back at the soap factory, but it's finally time to combine the caustic solution from the wood ash and Anna's olive oil. I'm pouring gently so we only get the clear top layer of the olive oil. Okay. And then you whisk it as it goes in. Keep whisking? Keep whisking, yeah. So what are we looking for, actually? What we're looking for is a froth forming on the top. Oh, OK. When the two elements yeah, start reacting really with each other, the other two components oh, start reacting with each yeah. other. I mean, this could take a long time. Well, I'll never take soap for granted again. Meanwhile, Mike's trees slowly turning into a bow. I've marked a rough shape on, and now I'm shaving it down to that shape with this spoke shave. But if a bow you saw me, <laughs> you'd have 40 fears, I'm sure. Well, the longbow was, has been reported to be the first instrument man's made that can store a steady input of energy, in other words, when you draw the bow, but, but release it in an almost explosive way so that it can rapidly propel an arrow. I mean, the arrow that leaves the bow's got no more energy than the man put in. But it's just, it's converted that energy. Well, the way we're dealing with forces and energy in this record player is completely different to, to that of Mike with his bow. We've got a lot of energy, or a lot of potential energy, because we've got a heavy weight. But we're actually releasing it very, very slowly. So it's a complete other end, if you like, the other side of the coin. And the bow needs a short, sharp shock. And here we need to use our energy very carefully so that we can make the um, turntable revolve for as long as possible. 
An hour later, they're still stirring. But is that elusive chemical reaction going to happen? Uh, so I'm not it? too optimistic. We should have had a froth by now. Oh, what I a think shame. perhaps what we've done is added too much olive oil. Do you think so? So the soap saga continues. I tell you what, can you put your foot on there as well and I'll stand back and have a look at it? Back from the oh, sea, God. I've been roped in to help our very own Robin Hood. Would yeah, you like a bit more cake? Yeah, it's just bending in that one weak place, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. I've got to take loads more off up here. So, why does it matter that it's bending in one weak spot? Well, really, you want the whole of, you want the, whole of the wood to bend. Because it's only the wood that's bent that stores any energy you can release later. At the moment, only that piece is doing any work. Right. So that's the first problem. It's nowhere near as powerful as it should be, because if this bit bends, the rest is doing nothing. But the worst thing is, with a weak spot there, if you draw that, because obviously that's bending a heck of a lot, and the rest of it's barely bending, it'll yeah. snap. So we've got to make it so that it bends equally. Mike's latest soap recipe, baking crushed seashells to produce lime to kick-start the reaction. But things have gone horribly wrong. We were crushing the shells and uh, an aluminium uh, saucepan that we'd found and we put it in this kiln and what I'd overlooked was the fact that aluminium melts at a temperature which is much lower than this kiln. So all the aluminium pot has melted and as you see it's running out here. Proof that even scientists get it wrong sometimes. Right, now string in the boat. Meanwhile, so Mike's made some string. modifications. I'm hoping that when I put it on the tiller so to check to see how it bends, It'll be a little bit more uniform. OK, the bow still isn't fully strung, because I don't trust it. But now at least both ends are bending. And it's not just bending in the weak point. So I might give it a test firing. Well, here goes. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it looked like it's made of a banana. I don't care what it looks like, as long as it gets us some fish for tomorrow's banquet. It's the end of day two, and Jonathan gives his turntable a trial run. Clean it up. This goes on here, the turntable. The turntable is connected by bands to this pulley, and this uh, pulley is connected to the, to the piece of wood with all the string wound round it, and that goes all the way up to a pulley with some weight on it. And when that comes down, it will pull the string with it, um, which will move it all. As you can see, it's all moving. And then I've got here, I've got a yogurt pot with a needle on it. And you, any so it cups track? your working your, as your amplifier, basically? That's the pickup, yeah. So if I put this on here, we should be able to hear a track. You can hear it. You can hear it. That is brilliant. But will we really want to listen to that during our meal? There you go. That's fantastic. Right. Our last day dawns. Time to go hunter gathering for our banquet. Right, let's see if our lobsters let's see whether it's been working or not. It isn't looking too promising. Nothing. Not even a nibble at our little fish. Is there nothing? Not even a little fish in there, is there? No. Nothing. Will Mike and his harpoon deliver? Oh, well. There's always seaweed. And vegetables. Oh, oh there it is. A wild carrot. A carrot? Forget the lobster, what about some crabs? Got it, have you got it? No. no. Oh, no! <laughs> Lost the arrow. Poor old Mike, he really should get out more. All alone, back at the prison, it's his final shot at the chemical reaction needed for our soap. He's given up on the shells and gone back to his wood ash solution. But this time, he wants to make sure he's got the purest possible ingredients to get that reaction going. So, he's redesigned his apparatus, and this new charcoal filter just could be the answer. And this time, his filtered wood ash is looking crystal clear. 
it might just work. That's about two-thirds and a third. Is that about right? And it's now or never for the soap. Will our purified wood ash finally react with our olive oil? What we're going to do is my super clean stick do a lot of whisking. So all these sort of complicated processes and ingredients that you've gone through, are these all vital to make soap work properly? Oh, absolutely. It's such a, such a precise process. Even the temperature of the water, if we go above boiling water in this water bath, there's a good chance that we might ruin it. You know, it's but how, how does it actually work? What, soap? Yeah. Well, the soap molecule, or the active ingredient in the soap, it's kind of got a dual personality. If you think of a tadpole, mm. right, with a head at one end and a long tail, yeah. if you've got a glob of grease here, I'll be a glob of grease. Oh, yeah. The tail mm. is soluble in the grease, but the head isn't. And the head is soluble in water, yeah. and the tail isn't. So the tail will make, the tadpole will bury its tail into the, the grease ball. So what's happening at the other end, yeah. the, the grease becomes surrounded by all of the heads of the tadpoles. Yeah. You know? Like cloves in an orange. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. So the head yeah. is soluble in water, it dissolves in water, and uh, it will just take the grease away. This is clever stuff, isn't it? It is clever stuff, yeah. going to be crispy fried seaweed. I'm just picking the juiciest bits off the seaweed, keeping all the horrid woody bits. This wasn't quite what I had in mind when I ordered a banquet. Uh, this is going to be the base of our soup. I'm going to add some sprigs of rosemary and the final ingredient, some little crabs. Nice, just all that's in there now is some nettles. And, some little rosemary. and how's our chemist faring? After all his trials and tribulations, he may just be onto a winner. Just look at that. I'm really proud of that. That is soap forming in there. Come and get it! It's the end of day three, and our island banquet is served. And Mike's kept his promise and delivered a fish, even if he had to scoop it out of a rock pool. Right. Oh, On tonight's menu, we have... <laughs> Toasted pine nuts, no. crispy seaweed and fruits of the sea, <laughs> crab and nettle soup, rock samphire pickle and tree strawberry jelly. <laughs> Let's eat. Well, we uh, thought that these scallop shells would make quite good spoons for the soup. <laughs> All that I'm hard work. Don't mind, I'll stay up here. <laughs> we quite like it though. <laughs> really good. <laughs> don't die on us, Mike. Did you shoot these? Uh, Have we got any like... salt? I made some salt out of some evaporated seawater. Look, and there's also some pepper there from seaweed. What do you think of the crispy seaweed? It looks like it's the contents good, it? of a moped's exhaust system <laughs> <laughs> after somebody's put too much oil in it. Do you know the, the seaweed exactly. is disgusting? Hey, how do you get the little shell? Rock, rock samphire. Rock samphire, yes. It's mentioned in Shakespeare, isn't it? King Lee. Yes, he said it was a brilliant yeah. thing. Dip it in oh, your pickle. Oh, oh look! Which oh, look, it's really snail-like. Mm -mm. Go on, be brave, big tough boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a shot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Am I going to chew then? <laughs> Hang on, see lots of vinegar on it. Time for our musical entertainment. It's one of you two's <laughs> earlier here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's a slow record. It's a 33, 33 revs a minute. It's hard to keep that steady. And to round things off, Vanessa's special dessert. Seaweed jelly with, with three <laughs> strawberries. Wow. 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 Castaway liquid soap. Oh. 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 All good things come to an end, and all that's left is the washing up. Time to put Mike's homemade soap into the ultimate test. Is it forming a lava? No. no. no it's working. <laughs> it's working. The grease is definitely coming on. Yeah, you better doing something. It's the old bubble. Yeah. It depends on the, the state of the water as well if it's hard water. Excuses and excuses. <laughs> Well,
Rough Science continues at PBS Online. Point your browser to pbs.org.